At what point is toxic too much? And is it time to get out whether or not the person is a narcissist or that you believe they are, or that you understand they are, or that you have proof that they are? So at what point is it too much? And it's just time to cut your losses and leave. If you're asking this question, my guess is you've been around a heck of a lot of toxic people or that you have been raised by a toxic person or that you still have a lot of toxic people in your life and you can't tell the difference between what is them, what is their problem, what is their issue and what is you and where are you supposed to do things to fix things and where is it actually the other person's responsibility. You are most likely so used to fixing things and smoothing out the mood for the other person so that you have lost your sense of self and of who you are if you even knew who you were to begin with, right? If you were raised by this, you didn't know. You're most likely used to fixing things for the other person to such an extreme that you've lost any sense of who you are or you've never had a chance in life to discover who you are and have that sense of self. You've likely been buried under by such awful treatment and manipulation that you are to the point where it feels completely normal to have people treat you this way. You likely at this point believe things are your fault and, or at least maybe not believe it, but have been told it enough times where you question it. You perhaps even feel like you don't deserve better. It can be really hard to know what a life can be like without toxic people in it when you've never had a life without toxic people in it. You know what I mean? So let's talk about toxic treatment and what it might feel like and some signs that maybe enough is enough, all right? So here is a comprehensive list of toxic behavior or toxic treatment in a relationship, okay? When the go-to and fallout way of relating to conflict or relating to difficult situations in a relationship is any of these things. Defensiveness. When someone is repeatedly and always defensive and then they gaslight and then they project and then they do things to twist the words so that they're always right, you're always wrong, or at least they're always right, or they're always innocent. Okay. Moodiness and anger becomes the norm. It's, it's like you're always walking on eggshells because they're going to be angry about something. You avoid this person. You do things in your life to sort of not be around them, even though you want to be around them, but you don't want to be around them. And you start avoiding conflict you start avoiding situations that could that you need to talk about but you can't with them your life suffers outside the relationship you start having struggles at work struggles with friends struggles with family you feel depressed and, and withdrawn there's never resolution in any conflict can't find a common ground can't find compromise there's never resolution even when you're fixing it there's still not resolution the arguments are circular you have you're constantly having these circular arguments that make you feel like you're running on a hamster wheel okay you are the only one trying you're the only one working on this relationship you start taking on all the responsibility for everything going wrong in the relationship the other person isn't taking any real accountability you make excuses for the toxic behavior it's because they had a hard childhood it's because they had a bad day. It's because, because, because. It always feels bad to be around that person. You're always waiting and bracing for the other shoe to drop. So when something good is happening, you're just waiting for the bad to hit. And it does. Here's the thing. It's not just like you're making it up. You're just waiting and bracing because you know at any minute this person can flip and be something that they're not being in that moment, right? They can go from good to bad. You feel there's no point in saying things you need to say because they're not going to be listened to. You can't say no or a fight will break out. You don't have the ability to have the boundary of no. They keep score or have a past agenda that they keep bringing back and throwing in your face. Even when you've done things to make changes or to, to change the way you're acting or whatever it is, they will bring back something that you said. But the thing is, most of the things that they're upset about, about what you've done are things they have provoked you toward. Not saying we're all innocent and we don't do things in, you know, but sometimes it's reactivity that creates us, creates behaviors in us. And then they will point the finger back and saying, well, you, you always do that. You used to, you did that. And, and basically they shut down the communication. You feel like you're on your own in life. You feel like you, that your person doesn't have your back. 
they feel like they're against you, really. There are verbal attacks. If there are verbal attacks going on or physical ones, that's a sign that you are in something incredibly toxic, okay? And you need to get out to get safe. The person is very passive aggressive. When there's a lot of passive aggressive hostility, it feels like hostility coming towards you. It's not, it's not a healthy thing to be in and it's not going to get better unless the person is able to make changes. And we know with narcissists they can't, but we're talking today about whether or not they're a narcissist. Here's the thing. If you have a lot of these things going on, if you have a long list of like if you go are watching this and you're nodding your head at everything it may be time to start thinking is enough enough they one up your situation whether it's bad or good they always have to one up it they give you no privacy they give you no space you're always feeling drained in the rest of your life and when you're with them, or you're feeling really drained when you're with them and when you're not, you feel energy, which means it's really, really draining to be around them, right? You can't trust them and they don't trust you. It feels hostile around them. You feel a heaviness and a hostility. They are judging you often. They aren't just correcting you or talking about things you you do or don't do in a way that is uh, beneficial towards you, everything is judgment. They're unreliable. They future fake. They don't follow through with plans, things like that. There is a toxic negative energy around them. That can only be felt and sensed, right? They don't communicate important things. They go on with their life when, when things pertain to you, when, thing, when it's stuff you really should know or should have a, a say in. They just do them anyway, or they make plans, or they make changes without discussing. But most likely, you're not doing the same thing. You're including them in large changes or in plans or whatever. So it's very one-sided in that, in that way. They repeatedly disrespect you. You are constantly feeling put down, belittled, diminished, devalued, and disrespected. You don't feel supported. How could you with all this other stuff, right? You couldn't, all right? They're very controlling. You feel like someone has absolute control over every move you make in life. You're betraying yourself and what you need, want, or believe to be right for your life in order to please them, in order to make things okay with them. The uncertainty is a setup. They are constantly coming and going, not committing to you, not committing to things. There's an uncertainty about the relationship that keeps you in a state of anxiousness and therefore cannot attach in a healthy way to this person. They are a constant victim and at the same time, constantly victimizing you. They diminish your value or worth. We talked about that. They lie. You catch someone in repeated lies. You are unhappy when they are near. You don't feel happiness and joy around them. You feel depressed and heavy and like you need to escape or like you're trying to fix it, right? You seem to now have such low standards for how people will treat you. You seem to see in your life that you accept things that you should not be accepting. You think about it and you think, I would never tell my friend to accept that for their life. And yet you do for your own. This person brings out the worst in you. So those are some examples of characteristics that might be within a relationship that you might see in another person that shows you that this is not something healthy for you and it might be time to consider getting out and getting away. What stops us is often our own fear of abandonment, our own fear of being alone, our own fear of being the one that's wrong thinking we can't trust what we're seeing and judge for ourselves what's going on in this relationship as it relates to ourself because we've been told that we're the one that's wrong or we're not seeing things right or we're so traumatized from it that we actually see this stuff in a lot of people and we can't tell if it's right or wrong so slow it down back it up talk to someone talk it through get the validation you need Talk to someone you can trust that isn't going to just say, oh yeah, that's toxic, is really going to hear and explain back to you or mirror back to you how and why this isn't good for your life so that you can see that you deserve more, you deserve better, you deserve to be treated well, you deserve to have 
the love in your life that is matching the love that you give in your life. And if these things aren't in place and you need some help, find someone to talk to. That said, if you need coaching or group coaching, check out the info in the main description of every video because it is available through Queen Being um, with myself or others. And, and, and so we're here for you. If not us, find someone else. Get, get, get yourself talking this through with someone that understands toxic relationships, understands what it's like to be a survivor of toxic relationships. Those two things are important because we've been there. We know the things that are holding, we know what held us back and we can often see what's holding you back just through talking to you for yourself. What is it in you that you need to accept and love and let go of so that you can then get yourself away from toxic people? I am Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches over at Queen Being and hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.